Well, welcome, welcome once again to another uh, Savior's Cross broadcast. Uh, my name is Pastor Jeff Williams coming to you from Spirit of Life Church here in Gastonia, North Carolina. Welcome once again to the broadcast. Uh, to my right, uh, Preacher David McCall. I'd like to welcome him uh, tonight. And uh, we're a little bit shy. Some of the brothers that's normally with us uh, had uh, engagements and had things that they needed to get done. I think Brother Darrell uh, ha is having to work and some of the other gentlemen is having meetings. So um, we're, we're missing them. Miss, we'll definitely miss their input yes. and uh, their insight on the Word of God. We, uh, we do have a, a few folks uh, that's joined us, a couple of uh, men in our church that's joined us here uh, in the sanctuary that's listening uh, to the Bible study. We appreciate these men uh, and anxious maybe one of these days to have them join us as we study the Word of God in a public forum. That's, that's right. uh, what we're trying to do. We're not trying to uh, start a TV show or start <laughs> anything like that. Uh, we're just trying to learn the Word of God uh, together to build our relationship uh, with the Lord, to build it uh, into a stronger way. <clears throat> and better yet, to continue to learn and understand the great message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Um, we, uh, we must uh, continue to mine out all of the things that God has for us uh, in placing our faith in the sacrifice and yeah. the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, a lot of times we use the word cross a lot. Uh, in our teaching and preaching, but but the crosses, I guess, would be a uh, in our minds an abbreviated term of Jesus Christ as the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world, yes. and what He has done, and uh, and the Lord Jesus Christ in His mercy and grace and love, offering Himself up uh, as a sacrifice for all mankind. Uh, not only offering himself up uh, as a sacrifice for our eternal uh, home in heaven, but offering himself as a sacrifice that we could be placed into him, that our life could be placed into his life. Therefore, uh, his death was our death. His yes. burial was our burial. Yes. And the great thing about it is his resurrection becomes our resurrection. And uh, that's what we've been talking about uh, in the book of Galatians. Uh, the book of Galatians is um, a great uh, epistle that was written by the Apostle Paul. Those of you that's been following along with us uh, over the, the last few months um, <clears throat> concerning looking through this, uh, these great verses and these great uh, six chapters in this uh, little epistle. Giant, giant truth, giant teaching. Uh, from, from the Word of God and uh, uh, concerning not only justification by faith, uh, defending that, uh, defending grace, uh, but also the great truth of, of our sanctification yes. uh, concerning how we live for God on a daily basis. And um, we're at chapter number five, uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to read... Uh, uh, let's see, we'll, we'll share this, Brother David. Okay. We'll, uh, we're going to read the text down through verse number 6. Uh, we're going to use the Expositor Study Bible as a help with our notes. And then we'll go back to uh, verse number 1 in chapter 5, and we'll see what the Lord will do. Here we go, chapter 5, five <laughs> verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. The study notes says, we were made free and refers to freedom to live a holy life by evidencing faith in Christ and the cross. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. To abandon the cross and go under law of any kind guarantees bondage once again to the sin nature. Behold, mark my words, I, Paul, say unto you, presents the apostle Paul, authority regarding the message he brings. That if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. The notes say, if the believer goes back into law, and law of any, any kind, what Christ did at the cross on our behalf will profit us nothing. One cannot have it two ways. For I testify again to every man who is circumcised. 
some of the Galatian Gentiles were being pressured by false teachers to embrace the law of Moses, which meant that they would have to forsake Christ and the cross for it is not possible to wed the two. As well, it's not possible to wed or place together law and grace. That he is a debtor to the whole law. Which of course is impossible. And besides, the law contains no salvation. That's right. Christ has become of no effect unto you. This is a chilling statement and refers to anyone who makes anything other than Christ and the cross the object of his faith. Whosoever of you are justified by the law. Seek to be justified by the law. You are fallen from grace. Fallen from the position of grace, which means the believer is trusting in something other than the cross. It actually means to apostatize. For we, through the Spirit, the Holy Spirit works exclusively within the parameters of the sacrifice of Christ. Mm, amen. Consequently, demands that we place our faith exclusively in the finished work of Christ. Wait for the hope of righteousness. Which cannot come about until the resurrection. By faith. Refers to faith in Christ and what he did for us at the cross. For in Christ, in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. Has no spiritual bearing on anything. But faith with which works by love. The evidence of true faith is the fact of the love which emanates from such faith. Amen. Well, amen. Praise the Lord. We appreciate the uh, expositor's notes there. Uh, going back to verse number five in this uh, epistle. Uh, the Apostle Paul is uh, finishing up um, a couple dissertations. The, the most current one here was the comparison of Hagar and Sarah in chapter number four, the ending of chapter number four. Right. Uh, Hagar, uh, meaning, uh, was, the, um, was the lady that Abraham um, had went in unto uh, I guess trying to help God out. Uh, God had promised uh, Abraham uh, a seed, uh, a son, uh, which would ultimately lead to the promised Messiah through the loins of Abraham. And uh, Abraham had been uh, told that through his loins, even though he was 90 at the time, and even though his wife Sarah was barren, God had promised him that he would have a son. And uh, so Abraham, I guess you may could call it a lapse uh, in faith or maybe trying to hurry or maybe trying to help God. Uh, him and Sarah uh, had uh, actually got together and discussed uh, about Abraham going in unto Hagar. Hagar was a bond slave to uh, Abraham and Sarah. Sarah being a free woman uh, under the law and Hagar being a bond slave under the law. Uh, and the child that Abraham and Hagar had was born under the law. It was a work of the flesh. It was not a work of the spirit. And uh, Paul used that allegory uh, to show that uh, we cannot help God in anything that he does. You cannot help grace by adding any works of the flesh. I cannot help uh, the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's when right. the Lord Jesus Christ said it is finished on Calvary, probably uh, without a doubt, three of the greatest words ever spoken is when the Lord Jesus Christ said it is finished. Um, and in essence, in essence, uh, Abraham uh, was circumventing that. He was going around that. He was going around the promise. God had already told him, you will have a son. And this son would have to be a work of the Holy Spirit. Right. The reason it had to be a work of the Holy Spirit was, it was evident. Sarah was barren. Uh, Abraham was way past uh, childbearing age uh, uh, per se. Uh, in other words, it had to be a work of God. It had to be a work of the Holy Spirit. And uh, Paul is saying here, since, since we've seen all of that and since we understand that 
We're no longer under, God, under law. We are under grace. Uh, Paul says, stand therefore. He's saying, therefore, since, since what we've just said, since we've, what we've looked at, and him speaking to the church at Galatia, he, said, he says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or freedom. The word liberty there uh, could also be translated as freedom. Stand fast, therefore, in the freedom wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I love how he puts this, and you think that's a mouthful of words, but he worded it that way. Uh, it's worded that way by the Holy Spirit intentionally. And the reason I say that is stand fast is um, another way of saying be steadfast. Yes. Stand fast or be steadfast. And what does steadfast mean? Steadfast means don't be wavering. Right. So be unwavering, steadfast, yes. stead, be unwavering, therefore, because of all the stuff he said before. Because of what I just said, be, be unwavering in liberty. So what is liberty? Liberty is actually the ability to, to achieve freedom. It's, it's, it's not actually, I, I don't think, freedom itself. It's, it's, it's the availability of freedom. Yes. It's like here in the United States, yes. we have liberty. Um, we, can, we, we go to work where we want. We travel where we want. Uh, we don't get to pay taxes like we want. Well, we wouldn't be paying any. Right. But, but there's liberty in most every aspect of our life. Uh, some people are born into countries and have never experienced liberty. Right. So that word liberty means the ability to have freedom, the ability to have freedom. We have liberty. Whether we take those freedoms or not is up to us. That's why that word liberty is so important because it's saying, don't waver from what you've been given. Right. You've been given an opportunity to have freedom. And not be entangled in the yoke, not be entangled in bondage. Why do you choose bondage over freedom? Christ Jesus made it available to you. Why are you le reaching back to the circumcision? Right. Why are you reaching back <laughs> to acts of the flesh when it's clear all throughout history, beginning with Abraham and Sarah, that acts of the Spirit is where the the Spirit of God works. Amen, amen. It's, in essence, it's a decision to move from the works of the law or, or to, to move from the work of Christ back to the works of the law. And again, we hear these words and we hear preachers uh, and, I, you know, the Word of God often refers to living under law or under grace. Um, Paul is, is speaking of grace and the liberty that's found yes. in grace being free from the law. Um, and I, I, I really believe that, um, that we as a church uh, body, all of us, um, not just Spirit of Life Church, but all of, all of uh, our churches and all of our pastors uh, and preachers, um, we need to get our spiritual shovel out and mine into this issue of living under law and grace. Yes. I, I think, uh, and I think we do a, a pretty fair job of explaining it to our people as far as a, uh, a salvation experience and that we're not saved by works, not by righteousness, lest any man should boast. And all of our righteousness is filthy rags and we cannot work our way into heaven. He's not talking about salvation. He's not talking about salvation here. And that's one of, the, one of the things too that we could say. Just as you cannot work your way into heaven, you and I cannot work our way into victorious Christian that's living. That's correct. We cannot work our way into into anything that is given by God's grace. Everything that we receive from God is through faith in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ and his finished work. That's right. It's, it's like these guys, um, he wasn't talking to lost people here. He no. was talking to the brethren. 
And these guys, just to kind of recap a little bit, they had let these Judaizers come in and they were trying to have them, if, if your men aren't circumcised, if, if you're not following this ritual, if you're not having this feast, you're, you're not accepted by God. And that's totally antithetical to what Christ did on the cross. Right. right. You, there's nothing. What can, <clears throat> I've said it a thousand times, and I'm going to keep saying it. What can we possibly add to what Christ did for Amen. us, Pastor? Amen. Amen. I, I was thinking too, Brother David, you know, these were uh, Gentile converts. Mm -hmm. And these Gentile converts, um, they had not been exposed to the Mosaic law. Mm -mm. When Paul come in, Paul preached Christ crucified. And that is the freedom and the liberty that they started out they in. They were slinging all kind of they, idols out the front th door. That's right. They were getting rid of everything and they were enjoying the freedom of really not being under law, even though they had not been privileged at the time to understand the Mosaic law. But even not knowing the Mosaic law, when these Judaizers come in and started explaining it to them and putting them under the yoke of the, the, yoke of the law, um, still, even at the time that they were serving those idols... And, and surely serving those idols that were made by hands and made by men's um, ingenuity, if you will. And by profit. And by profit, absolutely. <laughs> Still, in essence, they were living under law and they had never been exposed to the Mosaic law because they no doubt would have to pay um, uh, omniscience to that idol, maybe mm -hmm. go in three times a day and, mm -hmm. and, and celebrate the, the feast of that particular idol. Well, they, they had, like you said, Paul preached Christ, the freedom that is found in Christ, the death, burial, and the resurrection, the freedom that is found by dying unto oneself and being raised to newness of life. They had thrown, as you said very well, that they had put all of the idols out from them and then hear these Judaizers, these these that uh, um, these ones that uh, that sort of crept in uh, to sp and the Bible even says here that they come in to spy out their liberty, and I, I mean they, it's, that's that's pretty that's pretty strong there. But they had come in and said, "Hey, this this Jesus thing is good." Um, you know, we believe that he died and rose again too, and we believe in him too. But if you really, really, truly want to get close to God, yep. because see, we are Jews, and the oracles of God was given to us. The real, the, we, we are the only people that God has spoke to. The, the people in our lineage is the only people that Jehovah has actually spoken to face to face, which was a true statement. It was. As a true statement. So in, in they were using their experience with the law and, and the giving of the law and the issue at Mount Sinai where the, where the law was given and uh, the tabernacle, so on and so forth. So they were, they were putting in the minds of those Galatians, Christ is good, Christ is Lord, but you have to do this, you have to do that. And if you'll do this and you'll do that, then everything will be complete. You'll have the entire sphere of God the Holy Spirit, and Christ. You'll have everything. And, and Paul, Paul says here, he says, stand fast. And I don't want to get ahead of, ahead of myself. Uh, but verse 2, verse 2, he says, he says, behold, I say unto you. And the Expositor Study Bible, Paul is saying, mark my word. Mm -hmm. He said, mark my word. If you turn away from faith in Christ and faith, faith in his finished work alone, you're going to get in spiritual trouble. You're going to be put back under the bondage that comes with the law, yep. with living under the law. Uh, if you're going to take on the doing of the law, just know if you take on two of them, you got to take on the other eight. 
If you're going to take on 10, you've got to take on the 600 fence laws that the, that the uh, Jews right. had, had placed in. Well, if you take on one, you're a debtor to do the whole law. And Paul said, mark my word, if you do that, there will be spiritual wreckage. And you were moving on into verse 2 where it talks about, you know, he even says how it's worded here is, uh, if, if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. That doesn't mean if they had been circumcised, Christ wasn't available, available to them. What that meant was, and this is true to us today, and we're talking about circumcision as an, an example, and that's what Paul is doing, but circumcision is just an act of the flesh. So anything that we add to Christ, we're all guilty of putting circumcision in the, in the mix, aren't we? Yeah. With something... And, and that's the way society has taught us to be because we are a performance-based society. But with Christ, that's a whole different economy, a whole different society. We can't, we can't add anything to it. We can't add any work. Me personally, I've, I've said this before in the broadcast. I, I used to think if I just stayed busy enough, I would sin less. Right. Well, what I was doing was putting it on me. Right. It was putting on me for my growth to Christ. It wasn't putting it on him, trusting him for my growth and him for the Holy Spirit to work in me and produce that fruit. Right. I was trying to produce my own fruit. Right. And that's, that's law. Yes. That, when we talk about law, that's law. When, when you put anything that you have done as a, as a step toward God, you've, you've put yourself under law. The only thing you can do is place your faith in Christ and what He did. What we do should be a fruit of the Spirit. That's right. Things that the Spirit has motivated us and taught us and, and led us to do. If we're doing something to gain favor or something to gain one step closer to God, we've, we put ourselves under law. Yes. And it's a dangerous, dangerous, dangerous place. And it's so easy to do. We're all guilty of it. Matter of fact... It's almost a daily thing where you have to check yourself. Right. What's my motive right. behind what I'm doing today? Right. We've got some brethren here uh, that, that go to the nursing home, and I know their heart's pure in it, but that's not going to gain them anything, Pastor. Right. If the, but the Holy Spirit is working in them and through them to go do that. I know they are. That's, that's the fruit of the Spirit. So that's the different that's what circumcision that's why Paul's making a big deal out of circumcision because it's a fleshly act of a spiritual thing and it, it doesn't they don't work that's true that's true I want, I want to talk about something for just a second we we often in the church world we we all agree that uh, the church we need revival mm. and I, I I agree with it hundred percent that we all are praying for revival. But as I was thinking about that and, and praying about that, even over the last, the last several days, it was like the Lord had put in my spirit, yes, we need revival, but more than anything else, my people need rest. My people need to learn to rest in me. That's right. And I have, I, in my uh, pastoral tenure, uh, in the last few years, I've never heard more Christians, more Christians that love God with all of their heart, say, I am just tired. I am just tired. And even tired to the point of being, um, wanting to back away from church life. And... And I began to think about that. And I began to think about my, my life uh, as a pastor. And if I, if I take on the shepherding of the church by what I do and the, the, the schedule that I keep and, and, and living under law as a pastor, That's right. it's then what I'm doing, I'm taking the responsibility of, of, of feeding this flock and growing this flock, I'm putting the responsibility on my sh shoulders. Now, I know that it is the pastor's responsibility to, to feed the sheep, but if I don't rest in the finished work of Christ, 
then what I'm going to do, I'm going to burn out. I, and many preachers burn out, but mentally burn out because of the heavy, tremendous, tremendous load from trying to, uh, to love people, uh, trying to, to, to be with people, trying to help people even with their problems. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you can, you can ignorantly, lovingly, try to become someone's counselor or even someone's psychologist. Mm. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just the Lord just spoke and says, says, and says to my heart, you, you, you're going to have to let me build this church. Not the, so much the attendance, but build the maturity of the people and I know I've, I've, I've probably entered a, an, a, the, the pastor-preacher arena here, but I have a point. It's the same with us all. That's right. Whether you're, whether you're serving God from a pulpit or whether you're serving God from a pew, if we serve, our, if we serve the Lord under law by keeping and placing our faith in what we do, my faith's in my church attendance. My faith is that I'm a faithful pastor. My faith, and you know, and I, I get to doing the routine, then what I, ha I have done in turn, I have taken myself out from under sure the fountain of God's grace. God wants me to allow what Jesus Christ, and especially, especially, Putting on Christ, mm. the no longer I, but Christ mm. in me that yes. we hear from Galatians 2.20. We've already covered it. And that's why the Apostle Paul is saying here in verse number 1 of chapter 5. And by the way, just FYI, every book in the Bible has one key verse. Every book in the Bible, scholars have, 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 have examined in one key verse. And the key verse... In Galatians, in the book of Galatians, is five and one. And Paul is saying, stand, stand fast, therefore, in the freedom, stand. And sometimes you could even put that word rest, mm. rest. Don't move from the rest. While you're standing. That is, that's right. You Exactly. And you cannot stand, brother, if you're not resting. That's right. You cannot stand in the things of the Lord and do God's work if you began taking it upon yourself. But Paul says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or the freedom. Freedom from what, Jeff? Freedom from what? Freedom from the law. Right. Freedom from the works of what I can do to produce the result I need. Yes. That's the bottom line. That's why the Apostle Paul said, don't you do it. Don't you let those Judaizers talk you, in, talk you into this, as we said in verse number two. Yeah, and that's what, he was, that's what he was trying to emphasize, especially throughout, well, throughout the whole book, but especially here, he, he's giving them their results of that. If you do this, if you if you don't hold on to Christ and Christ alone, you're you're entering, you're choosing bondage over liberty or freedom. That's right. You're choosing it, and it it literally is a choice. And we have we make that choice on a daily basis whether we're going to live in the flesh or we're going to live in the spirit. And you know, I'll be the first to raise my hand and tell you I fail at this some days. Oh, most days. I, <laughs> we do. I fail at this sometimes multiple times a day. Yes. But my point in that is, is I don't have to worry about how well I'm doing. I don't put myself on a scale and I grade myself because I trust in the grace and the mercy that Christ offered on that cross when he said it is finished. This battle, whatever that battle, that battle might be today. It literally is finished in the spirit. We may have to walk through it in the flesh to get there, but it is already won. It's already done. Absolutely, absolutely. I was thinking about uh, what Peter said, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1, and it, it, it boils down to an issue of faith. Do I trust in myself? Do I trust in my religious calisthenics? Do I trust in my willpower? Do I trust in me to serve God? Because that's ultimately what we want to do. We want to serve God. Do I trust 
in myself, in what I can do, or do I trust in what Christ can do in me and through me? And it's a matter of faith. It's it's simply a matter of faith. And that's why another reason or another way we might say that the Apostle Paul was saying, don't move from your position of faith. And Peter said this. He says in verse number seven, quickly, he says that the trial of your faith, the greatest trial in a believer's faith is the, is the trial of trusting in myself. Mm. That is the greatest trial. I'd have to deal with that trial every day. Whether I'm going to trust in Jesus Christ and his finished work for everything that I need in my life. And by the way, the Holy Spirit does not work in my life when I'm trusting in myself. Sure don't. The Holy Spirit works in my yeah, life only when I place my faith and I trust in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Peter said that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found, might be found unto, unto praise and honor and glory at the, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And, he, and Paul repeats this when he, he sends his letter to Titus. In, in chapter 1, verse 10, it says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, talking about works again, he says, whose mouths must be stopped. Right. Isn't that something? And he goes on to say, uh, the wit- This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply. Wow. So when I catch myself, I rebuke me sharply. I rebuke. I rebuke that out of me. I rebuke that fleshly thought in the name of Jesus. And I can get in the flesh. Ask my wife if you don't believe me. Verse 14, not giving heed to Jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth. That's, That's pretty powerful right there. You can't have faith and truth in works. Faith and truth and works. You get to choose one. Right, right. We uh, often have to have to drop back and and clarify some things, and and we'll we'll do it again tonight. When we we're not denigrating uh, the law or the Ten Commandments. No, no, no. Uh, no, no the no. Scripture and and even even the Jewish traditions, the feast, and not denigrating that at all. Um, the the Bible says that the law is holy. Um, yes. And God, God Himself wrote with His finger on a tablet, and gave to Moses Himself. Uh, so the law is righteous. The law is is God's character. It's perfect. Uh, it's perfect. Um, it is the moral standard. The thing, the thing where we get in trouble with the law is, is that we use it for the wrong purpose. The law was meant, and we've covered this here many times, the doing, the doing of the law was meant um, to show us our insufficiency. Uh, Number one, if you want to go back to Christianity 101, uh, the law was to show us that we were lost and undone, and there's no way we can even keep the law. Well, I mean, it, it seems like that we have a, um, a real easy time accepting that for salvation, but when we move into the sphere of sanctification, we take it on ourselves again. But the law is righteous and holy. But all of those feasts, all of the, um, Paul talked about keeping the days and keeping the months and and, and they, were, uh, they were watching the new moons and everything that was under Jewish history and Jewish law, they were taken. Paul was telling them, and, it's, and the Lord, the Holy Spirit is still telling us this today, that all of that was fulfilled in the life and death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. His 33 and a half years, contrary to popular belief, This man never broke the law in thought, word, or deed. He fulfilled the law. He literally fulfilled it. He literally, with his sinless, perfected life, 
literally fulfilled all of God's righteous demands. Never slipped up one time. Never had a bad day. Never, never tripped up and fell. Never once, never once, not one time, not one time did, did, did Jesus uh, say anything or do anything that was subpar. And on top of that, he became sin. Hmm. Sinless. But yet he became. Yes, he did. He, 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 he placed himself under the curse of the law. He placed himself, the Bible says, cursed is he that hangeth on a tree. Right. He, because of his love and mercy, he placed, he put himself in that position to being a curse for us. So, in the eyes of God, if you and I try to go back down that road, and here's the thing. You don't have to take the Mosaic law. You can make a law out of anything. Sure can. That's, that's where it's relevant today. You can make a law out of anything. You can, and it's really what you put your trust in. That's the bottom line. A, a law is what you put your trust in. Do you put your trust in the law of faith? Even the, God even has that. There, that's a law in itself, the law of faith. The faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you trusting in that? Or are you trusting in uh, the law of Moses? Or are you trusting in a set of man-made rules? Maybe, maybe your uh, religious affiliation, they have their own um, uh, mantra of rules that you follow. Um, we have some of our uh, brothers and sisters that, that are Seventh-day Adventists. Um, not, uh, not picking on them whatsoever, but they have one day a week and that, that they worship on. Um, that, is, that is a very, very strict rule for them. Um, and what they've done, what they've done, they, I, and, and pardon me, but I don't see how that we have a Bible and we cannot see that Jesus fulfilled the Sabbath. He is our Sabbath That's rest. Right. We rest, and, and, and we've talked about it and chuckled on it about it here before, about we had condemned somebody if we seen them on a lawnmower on Sunday. Yep, I've done uh, it. You Didn't know, you? and yeah, yeah, and, and, and uh, somebody once said, well, if you're going to cut your grass on Sunday, the uh, least you could do is wear a suit and tie while you're doing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that, too. I've seen that. But anyway, <laughs> that's silly. That's silly. I believe we should respect God's day. But just because... I choose not to cut my grass on Sunday. That does not merit me anything with God. Sure don't. It does not. I am not keeping the keeping of the Sabbath day. The keeping of it as a law. As a law. What I'm doing, I'm saying what Christ did, it profiteth me nothing. And when, when, right when we get into that, when we get into that way and that mode of living, and um, I, I know I'm carrying on tonight, but I want to say this. <laughs> Just a little bit. I, I want to say this because it's very serious. We're living in serious times. If the church will learn the message of the cross and begin to rest in him, a lot of burdens, a lot of burdens will roll away. And, and I'm going to give you this. After, I want to give it back to you after this statement. Let's, 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 let's think about this. For the believer that's struggling, they've done everything they know to do. They're discouraged. They're, they're despondent. They, they just feel like they're end of it, at the end of their rope. But yet they have loved God with all of their heart. And still they find themselves at the end of the rope. Now I want to ask you a, a, a question. Jesus says in his word that he gives us all things pertaining to life and godliness. Let's ask all of ourselves a question. Did God give us a way to live for him 
in a successful manner. I'm not saying that trials won't come and tribulations won't come. I'm talking about the, the depressed Christian that's living Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. There's no joy. Mm. There's no joy in your salvation. There's no happiness there. There's no life. There's no brightness in your face. You, you feel this depressive state constantly. I'm asking the question to us all. Do you think God, do we think God would have the answer to this dilemma in this book? The answer is obviously Absolutely. yes. Absolutely. The answer, God has an answer in this book. As a great, as a great evangelist uh, once said that there was a time that he was going through in his life that he, he couldn't understand. And he said, God, I don't know what. I don't know where, I don't know how, but I know the answer to what I'm going through right now is in this book. And what happened? What happened? God showed him the cross. God showed him as, we, as we're looking at Christ actually being a part of our own life and the Holy Spirit placing us into his life. So that the old man could be buried and the new man could be raised to newness of life. And the new man, could, the new man has joy. It's resurrection life. It's, there's happiness. There's yeah. peace. There's the, the fruit of the Spirit. And all of these things are working in the life. That's what, I, that's what I believe the Lord wants us to see. That's what I believe. That's what I believe Paul, Brother David, was so militant about. Because he knew he knew that if these Christians, if these believers pulled themselves back under law, they were pulling themselves back under the curse. And with this, a whole nother subject, with this being said, when you pull yourself under law, you pull yourself under the curse of the law. What you do and what we do is we incite or arouse the sin nature. Absolutely. Because the law, that's the job of the law. The, when we live under the law, it's, and, and I'm going to give it back to you, but I, I, want, I want us to realize that God loved us enough to give us a simple plan, a simple plan to place all of our marbles, all of our eggs in the basket of the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to work. You're speaking of faith. That's it. That's faith. We have faith. It, we're on this now. This is where the Lord has brought us. We have faith. If for me, for me, I was in a gospel group with my family. I was 14 years old. And I'm standing there playing the bass guitar in a gospel group. And I hear... I hear we're playing music softly and my dad is preaching and I hear him, maybe for the first time, really hear him. But probably not. It was just the Holy Spirit was present and he was speaking to my heart. And the words, and I can't remember the sermon, but I remember him speaking and I remember thinking, oh my gosh, I'm lost. I don't have what he's talking about. And I sit my bass guitar down and I go to the altar and by faith, I said, Lord, I'm a sinner. I, I need you. I don't want, I don't want to go to a burning hell. I want you, I want you to be my savior. Right. I, I need you to be my savior, Lord. And by faith, I know, by faith, He came. And He came, and the Holy Spirit came and moved inside of me because it changed me. Yes. And by that same faith, I have to place Him also as Lord, not just Savior. Right. See, everybody wants a Savior, but nobody really wants to put, nobody really wants a Lord and you think, Lord, oh, he's going to control my life. No, you're going to give him control. He's not going to control anything that we don't hand him. But the key is, if we don't hand him all of it, then we may as well keep it. And 
that is a defeated Christian life because your whole life, your whole walk, you will be trying to perform according to some standard, whether that standard was given to you by your pastor or through something you've read or some, God forbid, some preacher you heard on the internet because there's all kinds of teaching out there. You got to be really careful on that one. But grace was given through his death. And grace is the only way you can be, you can receive Christ is by faith and his grace. It's a gift. It's like at Christmas, Jeff, I give, if I package you up a gift and I give it to you, it's your gift. It's up to you to open it. That's right. You can right. sit it on your mantle all wrapped up with a pretty bow. And you know what it's going to be a year from now? Right. A dusty package with a pretty bow. That's right. It's there. Why? Grace is free. All we have to do is believe. Now, I'm not talking about just for salvation. Give me a moment. I'm, I know ahead. I'm rambling. Go ahead. But we are, as, as born-again believers... We are going to face battles and trials. There, there is, it doesn't stop. It doesn't change. The sanctification process is part of those battles and part of those trials. And we face things that we, Brother Jeff, we face things we'd never believe we'd face. That's right. We face things that, and you know, there's times when those things just send us in a tailspin. And we crash and burn. And I've been in the crash and burn state. And when I did that, when I was in the crash and burn state, it's because I was placing my faith in my performance and how well I could maintain. Yeah. This grace that he's given us and this mercy he's given us through his death on the cross, you can't buy it. You can't perform for it. You have to put your trust in him and what he did, even through the trial, especially through the trial, through the battle, through the hard yes. time, through the financial struggle, through Amen. the struggle in your marriage, through struggle with your kids, through whatever it is. Hand it to the Lord and say, Lord, I trust you and quit looking at what it looks like and look at what he looks like, what he looked like when he hung there and died, what he looked like when he was buried in that tomb. What he looked like when he did had that glorious resurrection and he's seated at the right hand of the Father and he's in the Father's ear and he can he can give the Father your word of cry, your cry out for him saying, Lord, help me. He's interceding for us. What more can he offer? And all we gotta do is believe, even in our walk with, with our trials, man. We're, we're gonna go through trials, but we're not gonna go through them alone. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. Amen. That's good, brother. That's good. The, the, the effect here, and, and you know, there's so much here, and I, I, I realize that we, we've been in verse 1 and 2 the entire time. <laughs> but I, I just want to keep driving it home. Uh, we see here that Paul says, again, in verse number 1, to be not entangled, to be not entangled in the yoke of bondage. And I that, 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 that that's strong good. language to be tangled up in the yoke of self-effort. That's what it boils down to. It's self-effort. And it is an entanglement. It, it, it? it is an enta entanglement. And we can, we can sit here on this desk and we can use that great theological word law. We can use that. that you know, we can, we can and, and, and it, it is a Bible word. But, but for, for all practical purposes, Paul is using that, even the example of, of circumcision that, that those uh, Judaizers were trying to place on them. It's, it, it was an act of self-effort. Mm. It was an act of self-effort by those young believers, those Gentile believers. And Paul said, don't, don't get entangled in that. Don't get entangled. And even... I guess uh, as, as we're running out of time, um, the, the Holy Spirit through the word tonight is, is telling, telling someone, don't get tangled up in your own self-effort. Mm. Man, lay it down. 
lay it down, whatever it is, whatever it is in your Christian walk. Salvation was, wasn't achieved by self-effort. Sure wasn't. And victorious Christian living is not uh, going to be uh, established and, and won by self, uh, self-effort. Christian victory has already been won. Amen. The victory has already been won. Freedom from the law. Freedom from the bondage of the law. And I, wanna, I, I tell you, we could take the whole, a whole broadcast, Brother David, and talk about entanglement. Mm. We could talk about the word of being entangled in works. That's how many, many, many religions are birthed today. By, by the entanglement of works. And it does not produce one thing. We could produce a whole list of don'ts. Well, don't, don't do that because that's the law. Don't. It's easier to say, do, do trust Christ. What Billy Graham? Billy Graham had. He he said one thing that stuck with me my whole life. Jesus plus nothing. That's it. Jesus plus nothing minus, minus nothing. nothing. Amen. Amen. Well. Uh, we can see here, and uh, we've got just a few more minutes. I want to I want to just read the rest of the rest of these verses to to uh, to to make sure that it's uh, sinking in. This is wonderful. We may come pick pick back up on it next week. Uh, verse number two: Behold, Paul, I Paul say unto you um, that if you be circumcised, listen to the just listen to the Bible, what it says. That if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man, I'm telling you to every man that is circumcised, that you're, you're a debtor, this is the word of God, that he is a debtor to do the whole wow. law. That's what he was telling, that's what he was telling those young Christ, those Christian men, whoever they were. That's what he was telling them. If you do this, if you put your faith, you're saying, okay, right. I'm, I'm going to put my faith in, 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 in the right of circumcision to, to make my standing with God where it needs to be. Paul was saying, if you do this, you are in debt to do the whole law. And it's, then it would go on in verse 4. Christ has become no effect unto you for Whosoever of you are justified by the law, mm. you are fallen from grace. My, my. And 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 this is this is the this is the famous go-to verse concerning um, eternal security. That's not what Paul is dealing with here. Sure isn't. Paul is dealing with the flow. The flow of, of the Holy Spirit, any God's grace, God's re- grace is anything that we get from God is grace, but it is distributed to us. Grace is distributed to yes. us by the person and work of the Holy that's Spirit. Right. So when I place my faith, and that's what those folks were doing, they were, they were moving. And, and think about it this way, standing under a shower. And God's grace, mercy, and finished work yes. just flowing on you and I, giving us everything we need for life and living. And stepping out or stepping down or stepping away from it or falling away from it. Mm, falling away. That's, that's the word that the word of God used, falling away mm-hmm. uh, from the flow of God's grace. It says Christ has become no effect to you. Verse 5, here's the thing, here, and this is key. This is very, very key. Notice verse 5. For we through the Spirit. For we through the Spirit. This is a work of the Spirit. Everything that flows to us from Calvary is a work of the Spirit. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Jesus Christ... Neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision. You know, I could see somebody, you know, jumping up and saying, well, we ain't. <laughs> they are, we ain't. Yeah. See, that's the human nature. You can make a, you, you could make a, they could make a law out of the opposite. Say, well, they are, well, we ain't. It's what Jesus Christ did 
period. For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision avails anything nor uncircumcision, but faith which works by love. Mm. Faith that works by the love of Christ and his mercy. We want to thank you for joining us. We've, we've got just a few more minutes. Um, it seems like it's went by pretty quick. Uh, I love God's word. I need God's word. Um, I need the Holy Spirit's uninhibited inhibited flow in my life not only to keep me from sin but to encourage me and keep me going it's the holy spirit and his finished in his work that 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 keeps me where i need to be and if you if you're uh, joining us tonight and you don't know the lord jesus christ um i would implore you to uh, to look at him Look at him and allow him to completely transform your life. Look at him in a brand new light. He came for you. He loves you. Uh, the, the verse that we all know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's, all, that's really all you need to know. If you know that verse and understand that verse and the Holy Spirit opens up that verse in your heart, you pretty much know the gospel. That's right. That is the gospel in, in, those, in those famous words that uh, our Lord spoke. Just call upon him tonight. Just call upon him in faith. Realize who you are without him. Just realize who you are and what you are without him. But also by faith realize what you can be with him and what you can be in him. We thank you for joining us. God bless you. We're praying for you. Continue to pray for this broadcast. Uh, and with the help of the Lord, uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Praise the Lord. Amen.